We are here with Mikhail Haggerty, who is president and CEO of Haggerty Insurance. Now, you guys specialize in classic car insurance. And you are also pretty much, you know, like a specialist in valuations of cars. Well, we do a lot of both of those things. And, you know, obviously the car market's been just kind of booming for the last couple of years. So you kind of have to be an expert in car values. Now, you've been following along the auction market and as well as the private sales, correct? Yep. yep. Now, what are you seeing as far as the fluctuations? Like if I wanted to, let's just say, are cars an investment or are people actually still buying them for passion? Well, I mean, in general, you should always think about these as a, as a passion investment. So if you like it, and it's something you're into and it's something you can afford, then you should absolutely buy it. But history has proven literally almost every single decade that uh, you know a smart buy in a collector vehicle and something that you like and you're interested in will pay off over time. So minimally, even cars that may have been a little stodgy or not very interesting over a period of years, they minimally hold their value and you had a lot of fun with them along the way. So. What All could right. be wrong with that? Now, if I wanted to buy a car, say, under $50,000, what do you think would be a good purchase right now? Well, you know, the trends still are, you know, European sports cars are, are I mean, that, that's been the hottest trend for a long time, but, you know, much, much more so than in the past. So uh, American muscle cars took a pretty significant hit after the recession. Uh, they were taking a big, great big run up before the recession. People were interested in big horsepower cars. People were not so interested anymore. So, you know, obviously cars like Porsches, um, even some of the Japanese collectibles, all of those things started to take off. All of those are still lifting up. So if you can find a good buy on, you know, something like, uh, you know, even in late 70s, early 80s Porsche, you can find those still for under $50,000. We still like early Camaros if you can find Camaros for the right price. Mustangs, can still you can still find those in the right price range. I think those are good bets. Now, the prices of the cars seem to be going up, yeah. and but the cars aren't selling. We're not selling as many units. Yeah. Do you think we're in a bubble? You know, it's a great question. I'm asked this all over the world. Are we in a bubble? And I kind of put it this way, with the, with the best of the best cars, the cars you read about on the news and you see on television, multi-million dollar Ferraris, that is literally just supply and demand. There's, the world is creating a lot more millionaires and billionaires, and they're chasing this tiny little number of the truly great cars. And so it looks crazy. I mean, like, how can these cars possibly be worth so much, right? Um, and so it kind of distorts people's views that, you know, for one thing, it's how, mu how much money is there out there and how few cars are there. Um, and, it, and these cars, it's absolutely true. They're, they've you know, doubled, tripled, quadrupled in value over the past couple of years. But I would submit it's really not a bubble. It's just that issue of a lot of demand and limited supply. And what the world is actually doing at this time. Well, it's true. I mean, I'm not an economist, but you know, global liquidity is supposedly growing. All these people are selling their companies, and they want to have something to do that's really fun. Yeah. I mean, the, the recession, you know, a few years back, obviously proved something. Owning a bunch of stocks and watching them plummet in value isn't a lot of fun. But owning a car that you really like is something you can still go out and enjoy. And if it's, you buy something you can afford, you can have. A, it is a great investment, and they're really good examples of stuff that you can buy. Absolutely. Now, out of all of the cars, including the ones that we would find here, what do you see as future collectible cars that we should probably keep our eye on, maybe make an investment in? Yeah, I mean, all, look, the rules of thumb are always, you know, sports cars, as I mentioned before, are important. So the, the more limited production variants of those are always the way to go. So if you're really interested in Porsches and you really always like turbo Porsches, then buy the Porsche Turbo S, you know, so you kind of buy the best of the thing that you can possibly afford. Okay. Um, you know, great example, we were looking at a, um, a early, there's actually a couple of historic vehicles here, a 67 Corvette. Well, they made a whole bunch of engine variations on a Corvette, but if you buy the ones with the biggest engines, those are the ones that are most valuable over time, Obviously. if you will. So cars that you see here, look, Corvettes are going to be collectible, Porsches are going to be collectible, anything sort of like that, those are going to be collectible over time, and, and look, you're going to have a lot of fun with them along the way. What about some of the cars that we may not even be thinking about? You know, yeah. like some of those unique cars that like, that one's going to be a keeper. Yeah, and I look at those things all the time. I mean, you know, uh, if you even ignore like the, the supercar market, there's some great little cars out there that I think can be kind of fun to, to look at as long-term collectibles. 
historic minis have always been kind of, they've always had this oddball little collectible value. And, you know, just like I mentioned before, you can buy a mini in like, I don't know, 40,000 variations or something like that. But if you buy, uh, you know, at the Cooper Works, you buy something in unusual color combinations, they're pretty cool cars. And if you don't completely beat them up while you own them, it's probably going to gain in value over time. Now, do you, I look at car collecting as a hobby, as a long-term hobby, and yeah. obviously I think you do too because yeah. you've invested your entire life into yeah. it. Now, what do you tell the young guns that are coming up and they want to start kind of collecting, but yeah. obviously the younger generation doesn't necessarily have as much money as we That's would right. like to, so on and so forth. So what, what advice do you have for those? Plenty of room for you here. You're going to find a lot of great stuff that you can like and that you can buy and that'll, you know, who cares what anybody thinks what it's worth over time because it doesn't matter what it's worth over time. I mean, my first car was a 67 Porsche. I paid $500 for it mowing lawns. Honest to God, it was a rusted out thing. And the fact that it's worth a lot of money today, it's cool, but I don't care. And so when I talk to young people, and everybody talks about millennials like, oh my God, they're not going to be in the cars. They're totally in the cars. It's just, I don't, we don't need all of them in the cars. We just need some of them in the cars. Yeah. And millennials are in the cars. They're just into different types of cars than the previous generation was into. That's totally okay. So if they want to talk about Audi Sport, Quattros, and Golfs, and GTIs, and things like that, that's really awesome to me. Just buy what you like and, and enjoy it. And if you decide later on down the line, that, and if as you maybe make a little bit more money and you want to buy something else, that's kind of how it worked generations before. It's how it work generations after. I'm When people say, are you worried about the next generation collecting cars? I don't worry at all. It's, it's going to continue on for eternity. I think, I mean, as long as it's going to matter for me and probably you, you're younger than I am, but um, it's just, it, it still is an, it's an easy thing for people to describe. You know, when you, when you own a cool car, regardless of what it is, mm -hmm. it doesn't take a big explanation. I don't have to have a degree in art history and you don't have to explain it to you and you don't have to have one to understand it. Right. It's just like, hey, that's a really cool car and that's it. Well, we'll I, def stop. I definitely know my friends like me better when I say, hey, look at the car I have, rather than look at how much money I have in the bank. Because so. you are actually cool at that moment. <laughs> well, thank, yeah. well, thank you. There you go. <laughs> Mikhail, thank you so much for joining us.